Hello everyone, my name is Ron Ferreira. I'm an Office Development MVP and a Technical Lead at Busy. Today I want to show you what is possible to do with Microsoft Lists Formatting and to show all the potential of this platform, I bring you a custom list formatting that I did to replicate the functionality that exists in Microsoft to do, but using Microsoft Lists. So, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, Microsoft To Do and what Microsoft To Do is, here is a brief description of what To Do does. So it's a simple tool that allows you to add your tasks, complete them, set due dates, categorize them, add attachments, and mark them as favorites to move them all the way to the top of your list. So this is what I'm aiming to implement using Microsoft Lists. In this image here on the left side, you can see Microsoft To Do, and here on the right, exactly with the same tasks, you can see a replica, but this time made with Microsoft Lists. And this is what I will explain you how to implement. So uh, after looking into Microsoft to do main features, I've decided that I want to port and bring to Microsoft Lists the task title, the description, the due date, the category, the uh, possibility to mark a task as complete, the possibility to attach files. So if I have a document that is relevant to a, a certain task, I want to add it to the item and inform other users collaborating in the same list that the document is there. The information about the create and updated status and dates and this is not just the date but also the user who created the item and who last updated the item and the possibility to mark the item as important so this way it goes all the way to the top of the to-do list and um, as we see over here on number 10 the possibility to delete an item directly from the formatting itself. So there's no need to go to the list, select it, and then delete the item. With this in mind, I came to this list definition. There are a few extra columns other than the default title that you will have to define. We don't need to create columns to all the things we've identified and we've seen here before in the to-do as some of them are built in in the Microsoft list platform. So title it's there by default when you create a new list then we will need a new description column as a multi-line of text a category uh, it's a choice column so you will be able then to define whatever categories you want to a due date to make all the comparisons so we can then uh, see dates displayed with different front weights colors uh, and so on and to yes or no uh, columns, one to mark it as important and another one to mark it as completed. The last one here, the calculated column, the date calculated column as a single line of text, it is used just to display the date in the same format that Microsoft To Do uses. So if I go back here, as you can see, the date in To Do and the date in Microsoft List is displayed exactly in the same format. And behind the scenes, um, this is the trick that is doing um, that formatting. For all the comparisons, we will rely on the due date column. So once you get the list definition complete, this is what you will see still very far away from the To Do list, but one step closer from achieving something that will allow you to manage your tasks. So we will proceed to continue our implementation. So the next step is to create a to-do view and this to-do view will sort the items by favorite and then uh, by due date. So this is what will move your task all the way to the top when you click in the favorite star icon. To separate to-do tasks from completed ones, we will group them by status. And once the view gets completed, this is what you will see. There's data already in here. There are two different groups, but as you can see, the status say yes and no. It's not that um, good looking as Microsoft to do, but again, already 
uh, working and you are able to track your tasks using this list layout. But let's get into the fun part. The formatting that I'm about to show you has around 500 uh, lines. I will not go through every single line, but I highlighted the main features that this formatting has. And I want to uh, mention some of the things that I think are important. So starting with the groups, uh, I use the group properties here to format these two groups. And what I have in here is the background color defined as the, the theme primary color. This means that this color here will be adjusted automatically to the theme on the SharePoint site where the list is added or to the theme of Microsoft lists if you are viewing the list inside of lists. And then in this previous slide, as you can see, the status say yes and no. Uh, so I want to format this properly to say to do and complete, followed by the number of items. The number of items is not here in the code, but it's also covered in this, sec in this uh, section. But as you can see here, if the group field data display name is equal to yes, then it prints completed. Otherwise, it prints to do. And that's exactly what we see here. So first part explained loud. Let's move forward to the status. And the status is this option over here that allows you to complete one of the tasks. And to do this without going to the task and without going to the item and change the value directly in edit mode, this is using the custom row action with a set value that changes the status value stored in this particular column. By doing this, the uh, icon that exemplifies, that represents this content area here, also changes to a circle with a check or to a circle with a ring, depending on the task being completed or still in the to-do group. The title, it's pretty straightforward. It's what we have over here. It's just displaying and, and showing what is in the title column. The date is a bit more complex. And here we can observe what I mentioned in the list definition, uh, where we are using the due date and the date columns to format the date value. So we have different font weights, we have different date formats, and we have different colors. So for tasks that are overdue, you will see the uh, font weight increased and this the date displayed in red. For the tasks that happen today, there's a conversion here between the due date and the date of the current day. And if it matches, then it's displayed as today. And in blue, and for tasks that are completed, we can see either uh, due and the name of the, the date and or overdue and the date, depending if the due date has already happened or not. For the next section, and I'm referring here to five, six, and seven notes, tags, and attachments. That is this area here. The first two, five and six, only display the information that exists in the list. So it displays this icon if there's a note or a description added to the item. Same thing for the tag. But this one, the attachment is a bit different. From the formatting, I don't have access to the attachments to the item, but I know that there are attachments there. So this icon here will allow the user to click on it and it will open the item pane. So the user will be able to interact directly with the attached uh, files and download or open them if needed. The comments and the favorites, again, those two options here, use the same custom row action. One with default click to open the item pane to display the comments, and another one um, to mark the item as favorite and to move it all the way to the top. So the comments have two different status, like the favorites and uh, the comments with color and uh, with this icon means that the list item have comments so it indicates a user that if he clicks here the pane will open and will reveal everything this icon means that there are no comments but still if the user clicks on it it will open the item pane and the user will be able to add comments to it last 
but not least, we have this section here that reveals all the information about an item. So we have item detail, the edit form inside of the item, and the created and updated deletes, as well as the delete task button. So number 11 here allows you to easily edit the title, the description, the due date, and the category without editing the item. So if you click in this area here, you will be able to inline edit everything. The number 12 will show the created date, the user that created the item, the updated date, and the user that last updated the item. Number 13 will delete the item directly from here. And all of this is wrapped in the custom card props. And for the delete item, like the ones we've seen before, there's a custom row action, but the action value this time is delete, and this will delete the entire item from the list. But better than seeing this explained here is seeing this in action. So I will quickly bring up here the list in Microsoft lists, and this is what I've been showing you here. So as you can see, there are a couple tasks here that are already completed, but as I move and as I move my mouse around, you see things happening and I'm able to easily interact with these items. From here, I'm able to change the title, change the category to something else. And all of this is done without opening the item detail. Uh, for the attachments, as I mentioned, this opens the item detail pane and here is the attachment and same thing for the cons. And if I remove this star and add it to here, immediately you can see that it reacts to the view and to the rules that were defined for the view and it changed the position of the items as it would do in a regular list without the formatting applied. So once you get the 500 lines of code and if you want to then apply them to your list, all you have to do is go here to the view selection and from here select the format current view and paste the code. One important thing that you should take into consideration is that if you've changed or if you've created columns with different names, then you will have to adjust those in the code so it, the formatting matches with the name of your columns. This sample will be soon available in the PNP GitHub repo. For now, it's not there yet, but it will be in a matter of a few days. If you want to get the code now, the only thing you will um, need to do is go to my blog, download the code from there, hands-on-list.net, and as a bonus, I have there a PowerShell script that allows you not only to get the list installed, but also deployed as a template from your organization so other users can uh, take advantage of the formatting without the need of replicating all these manual steps. So here is the link for the first article where this entire process is explained and soon it will be available also in this GitHub repository. If you have questions about this formatting, you can reach me directly on Twitter. And again, uh, go to handsonlist.net and you will find this sample and a lot more that will help you to take more out of Microsoft lists in just a few clicks. Bye-bye.